Sperm 101. Sperms are made up of a head, a midpiece, and a tail. The sperm uses its tail to propel itself through liquids. Within the midpiece are the mitochondria. They give sperm their energy and also release water and other byproducts. The sperm's head contains its genetic material, DNA, packaged into 23 chromosomes. At the tip of the sperm's head is a package called the acrosome. It contains enzymes which break down protective layers on the egg's surface. And when this happens, fertilization can take place. However, not all human sperm cells look the same. Some have two heads. Some have huge heads or no heads. God damn it! Others may be bent at right angles, but most of the unusual ones are not fertile. Mm. The liquid the sperm are in is called seminal fluid. It contains sugar, salts, and various proteins to keep the sperm healthy and functional. Together, the sperm and seminal fluid are called semen. To make a baby, you need both the sperm and the seminal fluid, as neither on their own is likely to result in fertilization. That's why vasectomy, preventing sperm and seminal fluid from being delivered together, works so well in preventing pregnancy. Sperm 101. What's a sperm's journey like? It's not known exactly how the sperm find their way to the egg, but only a few healthy sperm find the right route. Many swim off in the wrong direction. Some will perish in the vagina's acidic environment, while others will get trapped in sticky cervical mucus. Most will run out of energy and stop swimming long before they reach the egg. Sperms travel vast distances to reach the egg. The direct distance is only about 10 centimeters. And the sperms don't swim in a straight line, making the distance even further. If we scale the sperm up to the size of a salmon, the trip would be about 70 kilometers. That's more than 40 miles. The sperm that eventually reach the egg have to fight their way through a protective coat of armor. They do this by deploying chemicals contained in their acrosome. Then they use a spike on their head to puncture a hole. The first sperm to make contact inserts its DNA into the egg. After this happens, the egg produces a chemical that makes its surface impenetrable to the other sperm. Of the sperm left over, those that don't run out of energy, some might find their way out of the womb through the cervix. Some may escape into the body cavity until they're destroyed by the woman's body defense systems. Sperm 101. Ever thought about how human sperm compares with the rest of the animal kingdom? Hmm. No, of course you haven't, but we're going to tell you anyway. When a man ejaculates, he generally produces between two and five millilitres of semen, about a teaspoon. A pig routinely manages half a litre, which is a hundred times as much. <coughs> Men discharge between 40 and 750 million sperm, whereas a ram regularly releases around 95 billion. That's over 12 times the population of the Earth. The average man can usually have sex a few times a day but a lion can manage it 75 times a day during the mating season. Sperm are microscopic. We cannot see them with the naked eye. Hello? Sperm are about 40 micrometers long. If you lined up all the sperm from a single orgasm end to end, the line would be more than a mile long, which is over three and a half times the length of the Eiffel Tower. Ooh, la, la. On the other hand, some diminutive fruit fly species produce sperm cells that are 20 times their total body length. That would be like a man producing a python about 40 meters long from his penis. Chimps have huge gonads relative to their size, whereas a gorilla's testicles are tiny. Apparently, it's all down to lifestyle. Chimpanzees are promiscuous, whereas gorillas aren't. And in case you ever wondered what animal has the biggest penis relative to its body size, it's the hedgehog. Let's just hope he avoids those spikes. 